Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dawn, also known as Dragon Rider, and let's jump into talking about week number two of Grandmasters, where we have an entirely new format. That's right, trio format. And this format is pretty interesting. The Hearthstone Esports team put together these groups of three classes. You can see here on screen, here's an example. I'm going to walk through what the buckets, these groups of classes actually are. The players were shown the five groups of the three classes and picked one without knowing what the other players were picking until the deck lists themselves were revealed and posted. Pretty interesting, I think, honestly, on this, because you see matches are best of five. There is no ban. It's still a conquest best of five format, so these players are still going to have to get a win with each of the three decks, but there's absolutely no ban. And I think that, for me, is the most interesting part about this format and maybe one of the things that's going to factor in the most. I do want to talk quickly about how these buckets were put together. And I have a tweet from Abar here uh, stating that they looked at the Masters Tour win rate data, the internal win percent data, and the number of times that classes were brought to Grandmasters. And basically they made a power ranking of the classes. And then they paired a good, medium, and a bad class in different ways to make relatively balanced groups. So I personally like that they did this approach because, uh, as we're going to see here in a second, there was not a lot of Druid or Demon Hunter. And I think, you know, looking at what I said last week, we saw Druid and Demon Hunter were those top two classes that were brought. And, like, everybody brought them. Not only do we get to see a new format, but it also means that it kind of gets to shake up what decks are even being brought along with the fact that, you know, they can't just, the players can't just bring whatever they want. There's also no ban, which does change kind of the matchup spreads. And I think they're thinking behind the decks that these players brought. So let's jump in and look at what these groupings of classes are. I'm going to break down and show you, again, these statistics all were posted by Lorenda on his Twitter page. But the groupings, we have Demon Hunter, Paladin, and Warrior. Another group with Druid, Hunter, and Warrior. The third group, Mage, Priest, Rogue. The fourth grouping, Priest, Shaman, Warrior. And the final group, Mage, Priest, Warrior. So a lot of warrior, a lot of warrior in there, which I'm pretty interested to see like where that might have fallen on their radar when they were looking at like the good, medium and and worst classes, because I, I think to me, I'd probably put warrior in the medium. Uh, so this is pretty interesting to me that there's so much warrior, uh, but it kind of makes sense. The druid warrior package it does come with hunter but uh that was brought quite a bit so let's jump in and break these down i'm going to start with europe here a ton of warrior <laughs> i mean there's warrior in almost every bucket so it makes sense but lots of warrior there and the most interesting thing is a lot of quest warrior and then second is priest which is in technically three of the different uh groupings but it is in two of the same groups as Warrior, so also makes sense that people who were looking for Warrior ended up getting a Priest in their lineup as well. And the most brought with that is actually Shadow Priest. Looking at the Asia-Pacific groupings, uh, you see a lot of the people went with the Druid, Hunter, Warrior. So Warrior, Druid, Hunter, Priest, those are all the most popular, again, because the priest and hunter were paired with warrior in a couple of the different groupings so it makes sense if people were going for warrior they were going to end up with these other ones uh, but again here a lot of quest warrior and then finally in the americas same thing as well we're looking at warrior being the most popular there 
But this one a little bit different than the other two. The second uh, kind of most picked classes ended up being the Demon Hunter and Paladin. And that is because the Demon Hunter Paladin Warrior grouping was actually the most picked in the Americas region. And I, I kind of like this, actually. Looking at the thinking here, if they go for Paladin especially, bring Librum, which we see, yeah, six Librums, one buff Paladin out of the seven Paladins. They're kind of going for a more anti-aggro lineup. The combo fell Demon Hunter does very well versus aggressive decks. So if they are expecting people to be playing Hunter or even Priest and expecting the aggro Shadow Priest, then I think that this line of thinking makes a ton of sense. But I think the biggest thing that we need to talk about with this pick is probably is not very surprising to, to a lot of people who might follow competitive or say, okay, there's a bucket with warrior, like almost every bucket, right? Every Everything has warrior. Probably not surprised to see a lot of warrior. But I think the deck specifically in the warrior class that we're seeing has caught some people off guard a little bit. So let's talk about why it seems like people are bringing the quest warrior, which has fallen off ladder, especially like just it's become non-existent there were nerfs to the uh quest line itself we then had a mini set uh, druid became really popular so warrior especially quest warrior has really become almost non-existent in ladder for the most part especially at the higher levels with the possibility of so many other warriors Quest Warrior specifically does very well into the Control Warrior, and it doesn't do very well into Druid, which is only in one of those groupings of classes. So it definitely makes a lot of sense, I think, looking at what do they expect to see if they're looking at expecting Control Warrior, potentially, or even Control Priest. Maybe people pick Mage, and honestly, even the Agro Shadow Priest. So Warrior, Priest, and Mage all do fairly poorly into Quest Warrior. Quest Warrior puts out a lot of pressure very consistently, even after the nerfs to the quest line itself. It can still apply a lot of pressure very consistently. And if you're looking at those decks that I'm talking about, Control Warrior and Priest, the Control Priest and the Mage decks have a hard time keeping up with continuous board removal. They do have a lot of removal, but if the quest warrior is only to put out one, two minions at a time, the kind of more control style deck is going to run out of resources to remove minions. Now, quest warrior does not do well versus druids and warlocks, which there's really not a lot of. So... I think it it makes complete sense when you look at the matchups and what is ending up being popular or the most represented classes and that why we're seeing that switch from the kind of control warrior to quest warrior. Thank you so much for checking this video out. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm going to be doing a breakdown every single week of what's going on with the competitive, whether that's grandmasters or a master's tour, which we do have one coming up pretty soon in a couple of weeks. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. Go out there and make today legendary.